call the order this regular meeting of council for October the 18th, 2022, the last of our regular council meetings of this term. I thank each of you for letting your name stand and, and serving the citizens of the town of Swan River and congratulate each of you that have uh, let your name stand and be acclaimed and to serve on the next council uh, for 2022-26. I also like to thank those who are leaving us. Uh, kind of Dipper Mayor with Tony, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, um, Councillor Delorier. Uh, we've been here for a long time, and uh, we definitely have uh, a lot of memories together. And we thank you for your time as well. And Councillor Friesen, out of all of us that are sitting in this room tonight, you are the the longest uh, serving councillor. Uh, to date. So again, we thank you for your time as well. Truly was my pleasure. I'd like to also uh, congratulate Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Brendan and Madison Fodorchuk on their recent uh, uh, wedding here on this past weekend. So congratulations to both of you. Thank you. Result of the agenda for the October 18, 2022 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wynne Tony, seconded by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. Result minutes of the October the 4th, 2022 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor White. All in favor? It's carried. Moving down to 6 and 6.1. Result of the supplementary, supplementary report dated October the 4th, 2022 from Pasco Harding Company Chartered Professional Accountants relating to their audit of the Town of Swan River Consolidated Financial Statements for the year ended December 31st, 2021 <coughs> be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Six point two resolved that the letter from the Minister of Municipal Relations dated October the eleventh, two thousand and twenty-two, regarding the Pilt uh, Reconciliation Grant be received. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion. All in favor? Oh, sorry, go ahead. So just so I'm understanding correctly, the federal government changed the way they're paying grants in lieu of taxes and the province is backstopping the difference? Backstopping the difference? Well, they're, they're making up the difference? Not entirely. Not entirely? Or CFO Ganita, can you explain? I mean, yes, the uh, province of Manitoba is phasing out uh, school ta taxes up. and uh, as part of that they issued a rebate to ind individuals and organizations and companies but they determined that they would not issue a rebate to governments and so the federal government questioned that because they, they said they, they don't actually pay property taxes, they, they make payments in lieu of taxes. And so they said that they, they will pay what other entities pay. And so they said if other entities get a rebate, so should they. So they withheld uh, the 10% of the property tax payment because they said they will they shouldn't have to pay if other people are getting a rebate, they shouldn't have to pay that. So it 
negotiations between the federal and provincial governments dragged on for many months. And finally, the provincial government said that they will cover that 10%. And so that's what that is. The province is reimbursing the town for the 10% of the property taxes on federal properties that the federal government did not pay. Okay. 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 Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Seven. 7.1, result of the Director of Public Works report be received, moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? Councillor Delorier? Um, <clears throat> it's, probably, it's not in the report, but last week we had a discussion on, uh, on the generator for the uh, office here. Is that still... It, it progressing this year it is there's there's quotes being made and i don't want to pull a green light on concrete unless i'm sure i can do it so right now it looks like we may have to set up for propane which i that's the major hang up which i don't really want to do so it looks like it will be postponed until next year okay councillor morio uh, director harvey I, I know this year we <coughs> had mentioned earlier that uh, the base work for 13th and third street south was slated for the end of august and then delayed um, due to water breaks uh, is that project still on track to get this year or are we going to delay we're going to have to do that one in the spring i talked to the foreman that, that one's going to be uh the first project that we tackle in the spring is to get that one done because uh, we just have to do the intersection uh, but we just didn't want to get into doing earthwork with uh, the dropping temperatures because they don't get as good compaction. Uh, so we're going to do that one first thing in the spring. Okay, so, so with that, uh, if that's going to be delayed till spring, the budget funds that were allocated in the budget for that, are we going to... Uh, those will be that allocated for next year for the same project. So we'll put the funds that were allocated this year into the... They won't, they're in a reserve or they're coming out of a reserve oh, well not a reserve out of the uh the what yeah. used to be the gas tax nice. so it'll just be used okay. next year okay councillor yeah, yeah. i'm done yeah councillor white <clears throat> mr harvey i wonder if you could just do a a very sh short explanation of the emf fluid uh presentations that you and i and the people from emf uh did at the lagoon sure uh so EMF fluid or EM fluids have a unit called uh, EMF 1000 and uh, they've been doing pilot projects in lagoons and also in uh, ponds uh, and what it does is it increases the oxygen levels in the water uh, so it's totally self-contained unit with a little solar panel on top and uh, an antenna on the bottom that's in the water and it sends out a little electrical signal and that electrical signal allows more oxygen to cross through the air water membrane uh, so it increases the rate of uh, gas exchange and then with that oxygen getting into the water uh, it lowers the BOD so it's the biochemical oxygen demand and that's uh, something in wastewater that there's a whole bunch of different um, sources that use up oxygen, and so the BOD just qualifies that or is a quantitative factor of that. And so by allowing more oxygen in, it lowers that. And then also it can help to lower the phosphorus level uh, by oxidizing it. And then uh, it can also help with the coliforms um, because it just allows more activity that can then increase sludge digestion and lower the coliforms. Those are all levels that have to get below a certain level before we can discharge. And so normally we have the two cells, we isolate the second cell so that there's no raw wastewater getting into it. And then over a period of a few weeks, the sun and the wind treat it and then we're able to discharge and we have to add chemical to get rid of the phosphorus uh, but with this unit the hope is that we won't have to use chemical uh, the phosphorus level will get below one milligram per liter and we'll be able to just discharge 
uh, but we're going to be doing some more testing in the spring because in the spring is when the phosphorus is the highest. And then it also should help uh, with the smell because <clears throat> allowing more oxygen in uh, when the ice first comes off, it's been anaerobic uh, without oxygen essentially all winter long. So that's when you get methane in that. And when it's aerobic, then less of that is produced, so it doesn't smell as bad. That's why as the summer goes on, there's less smell. Uh, so the hope is that with this unit <coughs> that, and increasing the amount of oxygen that can get in, that uh, in the spring, uh, the smell should hopefully clear up sooner. And that's what we're going to test next spring. And so the guys that came up and met with myself and Councillor White, uh, they're from uh, Ottawa. And uh, they have a few pilot projects throughout Canada where they're testing this unit. And uh, so we had a meeting with the approvals branch before we put it in. And they were fine with us putting it in because we're not changing any of the limits of when we release. Uh, we're still meeting those, and that was the plan to meet those, so they were fine with that, and then they were just interested to see what the results are. And uh, so we have some test results, but then in the spring, uh, I think we'll have some really, hopefully really good test results, but that'll be the really, the key is we'll find out in the spring how well it works. So best case scenario, it saves us a lot of money, and at the moment it's costing us no money. Yeah, currently we're on a trial project yeah. with them, and uh, that continues about midway through the summer. So in the spring, we can see how the results are doing, and then based on that, I'll present to council <coughs> as to whether to proceed with uh, leasing the unit or well, the test results will show in my report, and then I'll have a recommendation based on that for council. Okay, thank you. For the discussion, uh, Councillor Bobbick. Uh, just to see, we got uh, repairs done by the post office. I've seen the guys be repaired. Uh, just to make sure we're all on the same page, that street's going to be looked at or near the post office to be done next year. Yeah, and we were planning on a strip uh, where the people park where it's really broken up to. Uh, Okay, yeah, that's what I'm trying just to make sure that people are aware that this is just a patch job for safety reasons right at the moment and that that probably be looked at next spring. Also with that, uh, has there been any uh, movement towards mowing uh, the ditches uh, and plus the trees on the way to the golf course from that blind intersection? Yeah, I just met with the foreman this morning because uh, it'll be a while before a contractor can get there. So we're gonna take down a few of the trees just to increase the visibility until the contractor can get there. Potentially having a center line around a couple of the corners, uh, so we might try piloting that uh, next summer if the okay. time once we're done occurs, just to increase awareness of as people come around the corner. Okay. Just another item that uh, would be probably looked at next year, hopefully looked at, is the sidewalk from Tents and First Street there, with the apartments there. So yeah. Just to explain that they were on the agenda this year, but we just didn't get time to do it, so they'll be slated for next year. Yeah, yeah, we're hoping to get it done, but uh, just with all the water breaks we had in September, that kind of ate up all our time with tobacco. And then just one other item I see on the bottom here, is it, it, it looks like they're gonna try to pave Main Street by the intersection there this year, is that what you've been speaking with the contractors? And That's stuff? right, okay. yeah. Yeah, just uh, it makes it a lot easier in the spring when there's pavement in there. Okay. And then we'll analyze it next summer and see what shape it's in. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.2. Result of the September 2022 Swan River Handy Transit Van Report be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.3, um, Council reports. I'll start with Councillor Bobbitt. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just 
<coughs> wondering where the town of Swan River is on a dog catcher and a dog pound. Where are we with that right now? Uh, we put out an expression of interest just for, for anything really. Uh, we didn't receive any interest whatsoever. So the, the, the plan moving forward is to, to continue to sit down with the vet clinic and the Animal Protection League and and, and see when we get enough volunteers to look after these animals on evenings and occasional weekends, we can provide pound services unless councils are willing to pay for it. So would that be something we should be moving forward to pretty quick with colder weather coming on and stuff like that? Does that should we be meeting with these people pronto, I guess, is what would be the word? Uh, there's, there's no meeting scheduled. Uh, the, the issue with that is we have to find volunteers. So every community entity is telling us that your volunteers are decreasing and we're trying to get volunteers. I don't, I don't anticipate it to be solved before Christmas. Uh, just move. Uh, we had the grizzly that for the watershed from uh, has moved the grizzly to the town yard just to let everybody know there. So I don't know if you've received pictures of it. Uh, not yet. Okay. Take a look. There were pictures taken of it all four sides. So those pictures will be sent to the town. So you have it for your references. If there's any damages, you fix them. Other than that, that should be all good. <clears throat> And just go on with the watershed. Uh, we have a meeting Thursday, and I'm hoping that Councillor Delorier will stay on as our citizen rep at the watershed because we can appoint two people, which I'd have to, which the board would have to appoint to stay on as watershed as a citizen rep. And that'll be something that a new council will decide okay. to. Okay. And that's it. Okay. Councillor White. Uh, just continuing some meetings with uh, Ms. Gulak from the Manitoba uh, Economic Development Board and she wants to meet with our council and, and the other councils post-election, seeing where we're going, what our plans are from the economic development perspective. I followed up with uh, Ms. Bile in uh, Russell and uh, she's uh, more than willing to give us guidance. She's given me some phone numbers, people contact relative to getting economic advice, people who can help communities, funds that are available and depending on how uh, the mayor uh, appoints people to what particular committees, uh, I, I've kept all that data and I would share with whoever looks after economic development. Uh, paid commercial, uh, <laughs> it's one of my outdoors dinner is this Saturday. I think there's a 10, 10 tickets left, plus or minus a few. Encourage people, we have spent $79,800 in the Swan River Valley in the last three years. All the money raised at that dinner goes right back to the valley, which is awesome. Then I uh, and the mayor and others uh, had the pleasure of attending the uh, Indian culture event on October the 7th. Some comments about my dancing abilities rather lack off. I noticed the mayor made some special dispensations to get lessons, so he went out there, he looked like he could dance, but they never told me. <laughs> it's, it's awesome that the East Indian culture uh, is in our community, investing in our community, employing people, paying taxes, and uh, bring a different pers perspective on a different life uh, that all of us, many of us haven't heard of. Very warm, happy people. I'm so happy to be able to uh, work with them. Then on the 12th, uh, Mr. Harvey and I and the people from Ottawa and the mayor caught up to us. Uh, we did the Lagoon Tour, uh, an interesting tour, one I wouldn't highly recommend, to be honest, especially in the spring. But uh, we spent some time later on the evening talking about it. I, I'd like to compliment Ron Livingston, who is a uh, Born and raised in our valley, who's made that possible for these units to be here. Uh, the only two places in Manitoba, but from his ties to the community, and hopefully someday he'll make some money out of it too. But in the short term, he's not making any money at all. So uh, not as busy as usual for me. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councilor Delorier. <clears throat> okay. Um, I guess this is my last one of these. So. Uh, Tonight, um, my heart's filled with nothing but gratitude. You know, first of all, I just wanna, I have so much gratitude for the people of Swan River who through four elections, they've saw fit to let me sit at this table. And for that, I'm very, very grateful. You know, 
I have a strong suspicion when I look back at the story of my life, I'm certain being able to serve my community at this table will be a, an absolute highlight. You know, it's been a privilege to be given this opportunity and I'll be forever grateful for it. Um, 13 years is a long time. Uh, the kids that uh, they were in kindergarten when I first got elected, they're first year university students now. That really put things into perspective for me. Um, and you know, through these years, I've served with 13 other members of the community at this table. And to these 13 people that I served with, including the, uh, the other six here tonight, um, I'm very grateful for, for everything we've gone through together. Um, and a, a special shout out to uh, Mayor Jacobson and Mayor McKenzie. I want to give both of them special recognition and thank them both for their leadership um, that you've given both myself and council, both through good times and bad. Um, you know, as council, we've not always agreed. With some people, we've hardly ever agreed. But I've never seen anything that would make me question the intentions of the people that I've served with. And uh, I think our community should be uh, thankful to those people. And I thank you all for your service to, the, to our community. Um, the town would not operate without the dedicated staff we have. Full stop, no question about it. Our staff is top notch. You know, no decision or policy or directive or harebrained idea, because we've had a few of those, would, uh, would ever come to fruition without the staff that we have. So, you know, a huge pat on our back to our staff, and I'm grateful to our town administration. You know, I, I go off easy knowing that our community is in good hands with the uh, staff and administration that we have. So, I guess just since this is the last time I'll get to do this, uh, just wanted to say thank you to you all. And this has been one of the biggest honors of my life to sit at this table. So thank you. Thank you, Councilor. That's it for me. Thank you. Councilor Friesen. I think I'm going to talk after that. <laughs> well, I'll let Councilor Morio yeah. give me some time. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> um, wasn't many much meetings for the last uh, couple weeks, um, but uh, from Protective Services, um, just to let Council know that uh, Chief Fedorchuk has advised that the, uh, the fire truck RFP is almost ready to go out to the vendors, um, where they will provide their feedback on that, and that should be going out shortly. Um, and I don't think it's any secret um, in the town, but uh, if for anyone who doesn't know, but especially Council, and I hope and I would suggest and encourage uh, your worship if we could write a letter uh, to shared health emergency response services about um, the critical staffing levels of our EMS paramedic providers here in the valley uh, we have another four members leaving shortly so out of the Swan River and Math King stations where we have 25 full-time positions um, after these four people leave we'll have 10 people left um, people do not understand or do not realize that on any given day at this point we have instead of having four to five staffed ambulances in the valley we have one and that's sometimes staffed with one person that's in-house and a makeshift staff of someone on call volunteering from home uh, EMS in the valley or in the province as a whole, but particularly in the valley due to the recruitment challenges of us being so far north and not getting some of the, the privileges of being farther north, but the challenges um, is significant recruitment issues <coughs> in the valley here. So, um, so the EMS response capabilities um, are very stretched and very minimal at this point. Uh, thank our um, lucky stars that uh, the province has managed to put in uh, a contract with an air provider to provide air services for the non-urgent transfers out of our community to Brandon and Winnipeg and other areas south um, where it's not requiring these services where we're taking our land ambulances and transferring them south so that's the aircraft that you hear coming in out of the valley here almost daily because um, if that wasn't there 
the system would be beyond collapse at this point. So uh, I think that the community and your worship, if you could write a letter to sh uh, Shared Health expressing our grave concern um, for that, because our backup is the closest ambulance around is Roblin when they're stopped at an hour and 15 minutes away. So if you have a significant incident that requires or multiple incidents at one time, help is hours away. So, um, so it, it's not <coughs> a, a good situation right now. So, um, and yeah, so that's from uh, protective services. But uh, for myself right now, this is I guess our regular uh, last regular council meeting where term, which was uh, great to serve with all all you uh, fine gentlemen here in administration. Uh, thank you for the staff and councils that's not returning uh, for there so um, we did have a number of major accomplishments in this term so which we worked hard on um, one was like our strategic plan where there was a lot of talk but we finally put that to paper and got a, a booklet published that gives us some guidance going forward uh, with that so there was a lot of good times we had some a lot of disagreements but we all uh, we're civil. We had dealt with our differences and with integrity and, and friendship after. So um, we built on our good relationship with uh, the Association of I mean, uh, Manitoba Municipalities, AMM, and the province, where uh, has provided us with uh, a lot of uh, insight into happenings going on. So uh, that's good on us and administration for for doing that. Uh, but. Uh, for the ones that us that are returning and our new uh, members that are coming uh, here next week, um, there's still a lot of work to do, and there will be some new challenges that we'll have to uh, move forward with. So, with that, I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. <coughs> Deputy Mayor, one Well, I, <clears throat> I feel like I've uh, I should have prepared a speech for this uh, for tonight, but uh, I haven't. And I don't have uh, any meetings to report on, but I do have a, a few comments. And um, I'll start out with my family, and of course I will not be returning. And I uh, want to thank my family for their support and my young kids who um, watched me go for many meetings and uh, were there to always wait for me when I came back with the open arms to tuck them in at night and read them their books. So. Thank you to my family for that. Um, I did jot down a couple of things, not going to lie. Um, thank you to Council. It was an honor to serve with you. It was uh, a pleasure to go through some uh, easy decisions, some not so easy decisions, uh, but at the end of the day, it was a pleasure to serve in our community. To our ratepayers who uh, voted me in and who s believed that I could handle this job, and and for the past four years, you you did have that trust and faith in me, and for that, I I I like to Councillor Delorier, I'm grateful for that, um, and uh, to our administration and to the community as well. Um, we are the faces that you see all the time, but behind the scenes, it's really administration that runs this community and runs. Uh, our town, um, Mr. Ganita, who ensures that all of our finances are in place and somebody who you will n not likely see, um, uh, he's, that, he's the one that uh, steers the ship along with uh, the rest of administration, CAO Poole. Uh, I've had the pleasure to see you grow in your role and, and that is uh, always nice to see. I, I value and I I'm extremely proud to see you grow into the position that you are, and for that I'm truly grateful and, and happy to see. Um, I think uh, that is it. To the ratepayers of this community, you have a great town. Please get involved in any effort that you can, whether it's volunteering on committees or even part of council and uh, the meetings. Please get involved. And for that, that will be my last speech. And uh, to the community, to council, you have my attention and you will always have my respect. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Councilor Friesen, back to you. Okay. <clears throat> um, I'm just going to be brief here. 
Um, first thing I'm going to tell you about is Spooktoberfest. That's Communities of Care. They've moved it from Saturday, from Saturday to Sunday, the 22nd and the 23rd, because there's something happening there on the Friday that they couldn't have it. So if you've got kids that are going out, go on the 22nd or the 23rd. Um, also on the 12th, the Senior Centre had an open house. They were inviting people to come because they want people to join. I think it's something like $15 a year, and that gets you in the door, and you can win a coffee, you can play shuffleboard, you can play pool. Uh, it's just a really great place. Um, the other day I was at the cemetery and I saw the work of a beaver and I couldn't believe it. It was a tree at least this big around and just cut very nicely and down it went. I mentioned it to Mr. Harvey and uh, the next time I went out there the tree was gone. So it was either the beavers or Jordan. Jordan's on top of that. Jordan. Thank you, Jordan. Um, also, I would like to thank the uh, men and the uh, shop guys are so very, very helpful. Um, anything I ever needed, I used to just talk to Mike, or now I just talk to Jordan, and they are just so very, very accommodating, and I thank them. Um, also, thank you to Glenn <clears throat> and Lance, your excellent mayors. Could come to you for anything, and you didn't hesitate to ask us for anything, which is the way it should be. Um, potluck supper was great, and one recommendation I would like to suggest is see if you can find a youth counselor. When I first started, we had uh, Carissa Cole, <coughs> and uh, she was very good and very uh, well. It's got to be a certain kind of person. They got a like doing stuff like this, and um, I just think it would be nice. So. Uh, 20 years, thank you very much for your time. It's been a blast. And it was a blast. Thank you, but more so probably to say thank you for your time. Oh, like I said, I don't often do things unless I really enjoy doing them, so there we are. Well, for myself, um, uh, Councilor White had mentioned that I uh, was able to attend the celebration for the East Indian event there a couple weeks ago, or, or maybe last Friday, I can't remember the date exactly, but, but anyway, it was great, and I'm, I'm so thankful for them to invite. And uh, it is their very first event that they have hosted of this kind in Swan River, and they did say that they're going to have it again next year. And they do want other people uh, from the community to participate. And you're more than welcome to, uh, to attend the, these events because they're, they're, they're a lot of fun. The dancing, yeah, I got some lessons. <laughs> Sorry, Councillor White, but but uh, it was it was fun. I really enjoyed myself, so I, I do encourage you to do so as as well. Um, youth counselor, I have been in communications with the regional school on that. They haven't found anybody yet. That's and you're right. It requires a, a, a special person that is interested in well, not necessarily in politics, but just want to be you know, in, in the community involvement. So I'm sure they'll find somebody, but they're, they are asking a few candidates here and there, so. And then I guess lastly, you know, we all talked about each other in this, our last day, our regular meeting here, and, and our three that are moving on, some serve longer than others, but definitely that doesn't uh, mean that it, it's less or, or more valued, or I guess it is more valued, but. But uh, Councillor Delory, I, I do thank you for your, your words, and uh, we're pretty lucky, and you know, when, when you think about a, a team, I remember uh, Glenn McKenzie, the former mayor, used to speak, and he said that it, it made the job of ours easier because we have such a good team, and we can work and ridicule and poke, and, and, uh, and, and yet we can walk out of this room and and, and still be friends, and, and, and we have uh, a good relationship regardless of some of the disagreements that we do have, and, and we're level-headed, and, and I certainly hope in the years ahead that we continue on with that, because uh, it, de it definitely does make this um, easier. And to those all that, of the committees that you have served uh, very well in the last four years, and up to 20 years, um, you've, you've done, good jobs with those committees and I know that 
there's going to be committees, even though you're away from this table, that you will be involved in the community because that's the type of people that you are. So, on behalf of your community, I do thank you for your service. And with that, I'll move on. Councillor Bobbick. If I may, at this time, I would like to applaud the three outgoing things for your service here. I think you've done a great job. We all know what uh, is involved in being a councillor sitting around this table, the time you lose with family, the time that you have to do things, and the time you go from work. So to use for all the years you put in, from the CEO? Uh, just a couple of items. Uh, we are preparing, or we have secured our meeting with Justice for the AMM, and we are preparing to meet with the Ministry of Health uh, for the CT scan transportation for uh, 12th Avenue Crosswalk and the intersection of Maine. Municipal relations for, for capital and operating grants and economic development programs from the province. And just to let the Councillor Delory and Friesen know that the recognition pieces did not come in, they, they would have been presented, but we will get them to you. And just on behalf of administration, I know our team is changing, but to this team, thank you uh, for your professionalism, your dedication. Uh, this team understands its role, and it makes our job easy, uh, or seem a lot easier. Uh, you guys are the eyes and ears of the public, and it, it shows. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on then to 88.1. Resolve the temporary responsibility and pay adjustment policy be received and approved. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? Councillor Delorier. I, I guess. Just uh, some maybe wondering where this came from, and we've had a couple of uh, uh, personnel committee meetings where we'll probably have a, an issue we're going to discuss in camera later tonight that probably spurred this on, but this is a, a policy that's uh, uh, to go forward. What happens when somebody, uh, when there's an opening and somebody is temporarily filling it and how their pay will be adjusted just to have something in writing. Um, so that's that's where this policy came from. Uh, it's pretty s simple, but if you have any questions, I'm sure the administration can answer them. But uh, there is a, I don't want to see an incident, but there's a situation that we'll talk about probably in camera tonight, so. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.2. Resolved that the demolition and cleanup of property of the property on 419 6th Avenue North, roll number 52100.00 by Adams Contracting for the cost of $13,000 plus GST be approved. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor Bobbick. How many bidders did we get on the job? One. Councilor Morio. Um, this property, I guess, Council has been <clears throat> dealing with this one for a number of years through the public health order and all that. So um, I'm glad to see that this motion has come forward to the table and hopefully uh, it can gather support for its approval. Uh, I think we deserve um, it to our ratepayers to uh, clean up this uh, property that uh, is quite unsightly to the neighborhood. Uh, it poses quite a significant uh, safety concern, both inside and outside. So um, now that uh, we own title of that property, um, it's in our best interest that uh, we demolish this uh, structure and return this uh, lot to a green space and put it up for sale um, or to anybody in our inventory for it so but uh, hopefully this uh, passes tonight so that uh, we can at least give some peace of mind to the 
rate payers that we um, are looking after the community and doing the best we can uh, and as uh, timely as we can to uh, deal with these uh, derelict unsafe properties. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> 10.1. Resolve that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. <coughs> General accounts checks number 29472 to number 29526, totaling $117,088.63 as listed on Schedule A. Checks number 29508 replaces voided check number 29269, which lost in the mail. Payroll accounts checks number 5193 to 5199, totaling 95,703 and 3 cents as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposits totaling 65,775 and 96 cents as listed on Schedule C. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion, Councillor Bobby. I'm trying to find it here, but I see we have a hydro bill. I was just wondering if the hydro bill can be split out at a, on a separate entity so we know which, where that bill is taken to, like Wellness Center Arena. Like I imagine that's that street lights. I, I know it might be. It, is, is there such a way of doing it? Would, would we do receive them separately. Yeah, yeah, this okay. is just the grand total. Yeah, is there some way that we can... You want to see them separately? It could, yeah. But I, I, what I'm getting at is like street lighting, some of your stuff that, and shop and stuff that could be bunched together because you're going to have some different. Is, you know, there, is there specific facilities make, that? Yeah, you exactly. Want to see? Yeah, yeah. Is there some that you want to see, Council? I would like to see the, the 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 arena and the wellness centers hydro bills. Okay. Oh, you so. you want to see that just like as a one-off, or you mean in the future you want to see them? I wouldn't mind seeing it. Is that something we can do? Yeah. Okay. Is that something that would be public information? Well, this is all public, public information. information. Okay. So if it's split off and done that, then it's public information. Okay. Uh, just on that note, the check explanation is really an excellent idea. Like, I mean, uh, when council passes resolution to accept these payments and stuff, People need to understand that you've done a really good job of explaining to this on what we get to see. So that's maybe why there isn't very many questions. The, the staff and management has done a really good job of explaining to us. So kudos to you for doing that. So thank you. I think that goes back to a comment that Councillor Delorier said along a few years back, and his comment was something to the tune of. Um, the CFO must know us very well to know what kind of questions that we're going to ask. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> That's true, full credit to the CFO. Absolutely. Council Morgan. Uh, check number 29524. Uh, I know what it, it's for. Um, and I can't remember if I asked this question before, but uh, do we have a, a plan going forward on how to deal with these vehicles versus just paying impound charges continuously? Like. Yeah, we... We did look at how long we have to hold them, and they can be disposed of. Yeah, we're going to do that. Okay. ASC. Thank you. Okay. Further discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Ten point two. Resolve the financial statements for the nine months ending September the thirtieth, two thousand and twenty-two, be adopted as received. Moved by. Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? <coughs> Councilor Delorier. You know, for the most part, we seem to be on track percentage-wise with where we are percentage-wise through the year. Uh, obviously, snow removal, we got hit hard last year, so hopefully it doesn't snow till January 1st. Because we're already... Uh, Quite over on that, but I guess the one so that but that's explainable. But the one thing, um, the cemetery I see we're we're get we're inching up towards uh, towards being uh, over budget on the cemetery based on how much of the year is left. Um, did we have a, a higher number than normal number of 
uh, internments or, or were? I believe we did have a higher number because I was looking at that one and think the revenue was a bit higher. Okay, so the revenue will offset that. Okay. okay. I'll double check that and let you know, but I believe that was the case with that one. Just as COVID's ending, there's uh, more people getting out and having their funerals. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's true. <clears throat> okay, other than that, uh, no more questions. Mario, you had something? Yeah, it'll okay, be along the same lines, like uh, looking at the percentages of the base on that, but uh, how are we on track for maintaining being on budget this year? Like, um... Well, regional planning development and transportation are the, the highs of those managers. Obviously, we have discussions and mm -hmm. we, can, we can implement things like no overtime, but that also affects services, right? So, uh, yeah, those managers have to have a plan to keep it under 100%. Yeah. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Uh, 13, result of pursuance to sections 152 3 of the Municipal Act. Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. Uh, we have purchased services and we have town growth plan as well. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. All in favor? It's carried. We're in camera. <laughs> Result of this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 9 11 p.m. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned.